Hey y'all, it's Andrea and Ben from VW Family Farm. We are out, we survived the storm, didn't we? Yep, it was uh, pretty crazy last night. It, yeah, it was. It, it got really, really windy, and uh, it dumped quite a bit of rain, not, not as much as I was expecting, but there was quite a bit that fell. Yeah, it got a little wild. So that is what we are out doing. We are checking fences, um, assessing damage. It's the next afternoon. We've already looked at some stuff, but uh, we're making sure our electric fence doesn't have limbs down on it. Uh, show you what all happened here. So we're just taking you guys along. Y'all ready? So we are looking for things like that right there. That will short out our whole system. Um, just gotta go along and knock that stuff down. Good job, Ben. That was tough. I know it. So far, so good. We just found a couple of little things on the fence, but even things like this, this cedar branch. Um, up there. We had trimmed on that, but it looks like that branch broke last night in the storm. So things like that laying on the fence are a big no-no. So we're out riding half of it. Lane is on the other half and just knocking this out. While we are out here, I wanted to show you guys, we found a little patch. This is called Perella Mint, um, and it is cropping up in our area more and more all the time. Thankfully, um, Ben's aunt told us that they are seeing it on their property. We got to look in, and sure enough, it is on ours. It will turn this purplish hue. I don't know if y'all can see that on top. Um, you can Google some of the characteristics, but you can see that it's got this little purpley tint um, under it, and as it matures, this is toxic to cattle and maybe other animals as well i'm not sure but we are going to we do not like to spray but we are going to have to spray and kill this out because uh, we can't risk losing a cow we've actually heard of people losing cows lately and i don't know if this was the cause but uh, they're speculating that it could be and just can't afford it so i'm sorry about the noise of the fan here on the mule it kicks off and kicks on keeps the mule cool It'll kick off here in a second. But we're trying to get rid of the Perella mint for a couple reasons. Um, it will cause respiratory distress in cattle and it will cause inflammation in their lungs and it interferes with the exchange of gases in their lungs. And so it causes um, what's in common terms called panting disease. And it's really the flowers that are the most dangerous, but the entire plant, the leaves and everything can cause problems. And a lot of things here on our farm are not good for cattle in the field, but once you bale them, dry them and bale them for hay, they're okay in hay, but this is not the case. These are still toxic when baled into hay. And a lot of times when cows eat hay, they just eat it all because it's not fresh grass they're sitting there picking through. They just start eating hay. So it can really be a problem. So you might wanna check for it on your property as well. So all in all, things back in the field look pretty good. Had a few little limbs down, nothing major. We actually had a big tree back there fall over. You can see there's, that's a random flower pot. We had this big IBC tote move from over there across the driveway, things like that. Uh, tarp blew up on some meat chickens. Didn't blow away, but it did uh, blow up and come loose. No, no harm done there. But back in the field, we had a huge old tree lost the whole top part of it, fell over. It's actually a favorite of the cows to stand under. So very thankful they were in a different paddock or it probably would have fell on some cows. So I meant to get some footage of that for y'all. I forgot, I apologize, got busy checking fences. But uh, we did have a little damage that I wanna show you. Hey, piggy, hey, hey, piggy pigs. Y'all are so cute. So we're actually out here with the sheep and chickens sheep and chickens everywhere katie's taking her a little nap and you can see we lost part of our roof we looked out at one point and there was 10 a flying um so it definitely could have been worse we got a muddy mess in there with no roof we're gonna have to clean clean in there get this tin back on because this is a good shelter for uh the sheep and the chickens and everything they love it in there 
You can see it hanging up in the air. You see some out in the pig pen. It'll just take a few minutes to get that put back together. So it was pretty crazy. It was some strong winds, lots of rain. They actually say Arkansas has never seen winds like that from a hurricane um, because normally we're a landlocked state. Normally by the time it gets up here, it has weakened enough that it's not just crazy bad. We usually uh, will get, if we're on the right hand side of it, we'll get spin off tornadoes in the fall. We've actually had quite a bit of severe weather from that. Um, but this is the first time that the actual hurricane plowed through here with that much wind behind it. It was just moving so fast that it stayed strong all the way till it got here. But thankfully on the flip side, it was moving so fast that it got out of here too. Flip things around on the front porch. All in all, I'm so very thankful. It could have been so much worse. So Ben and I actually, about a month ago or so, I don't remember exactly how long, on a video showed you guys cleaning up this greenhouse. And you, if you remember in this bed, this far bed over here, it was full of tomato plants. Well, we ripped all this out and a lot of tomatoes sprouted up right here where those plants were. There was tomato in this bed as well. And then you can see there's still tomato. It's gone crazy again over in this bed. Well, those that sprouted up, it's really late here where we are to be planting tomatoes outside, but they just look too good. Ben has potted them up in these little pots and we are gonna give it a chance outside. I don't know if they'll do anything before fall hits. You can see uh, they're small, but they have got some strong, sturdy stems on them. So we're hoping Maybe we'll get a little tomato harvest before frost. It just depends on how early it comes. We really should have had these outside about two months ago. We're experimenters. We just want to see what's going to happen. I mean, yep. I'm going to either pluck them up and throw them away or eh, give them a chance, see what happens. You never know. We may not hit hard winter until mid-December. Won't you look at that? It's almost as pretty as you are. Say hi. Everybody want to see you, Dot. Last tomato, we cleaned up 13 spots. You can hear the bull talking to us. And we have planted 13 fall tomatoes. As an experiment. As an experiment. Like we said, we wouldn't recommend doing it this late. We're in zone 7B. These really should have been in the ground about first part of July. So here we are seven weeks later or so. Um, but why not? They sprang up. They're free. Why, they're free. why not give them a shot? Free 90 free. And as you know, for all states are an average for a reason. They can come earlier and shock you, or they can come quite a bit later. So we're gonna bank on later and hope for some fall tomatoes. 
So you can see we survived the storm really well. We actually were getting to the point we really needed some rain. So we're going to be so thankful for that and count that as a blessing. I hope that you all survived it as well. I know a lot of you sustained a lot more damage than us. And our hearts, our thoughts, our prayers go out to you guys. And uh, we just love you. And just want you to know we're thinking about you. We will see you guys on the next one. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome week. Here it is Monday again. Uh, I just hope that you rock it. Let your light shine so others can see you. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Join our Facebook group. Uh, check us out on Instagram. All those things. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.